Literate Riding Hood, the school of one of Squid Little Man, much beloved by everybody, but more of owned by her grandmother, who never knew how to make enough of her. Once she sent her a little riding hood of red velvet, and as it was very becoming to her, and she never grows anything else, people call her little red riding hood. One day, her mother said to her, "Come, little red riding hood, here are some cake and a flask of wine for you to take to grandmother. She weak and ill, and they will do her good." May haste and start before it grow hot, and walk properly and nightly, and don't run, or you might fall a break of last of way, and there will be none left for grandmother. And when you go into her room, don't forget to say good morning instead of starting it by you. I will be sure to take care," says Little Red Riding Hood to her mother, and gave her hand upon it. Now the grandmother lived away in the grove, half an hour walk from the village, and when Little Red Riding Hood had reached the grove, she met the wolf, and as she did not know what the best sort of animal he was. She did not feel frightened. Good day, little red riding horse," says he. "Thank you kindly, Goof," answers she. "Where you going so early, little red riding horse?" "To my grandmother." "What are you carrying under your apron?" "Cake and wine we baked yesterday, and my grandmother is very weak and ill, so." They will do her good and strengthen her. Where does your grandmother live? Little Red Riding Hood, a quarter of an hour walk from here. Her house stands beneath the three oak tree, and you may know it by the hazel bush," said Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf thought to himself, "That tender young." Thing would be a delicious morsel and would taste better than the other one. I must manage somehow to get both of them. Then he walked by Little Red Riding Hood a little while and said, "Little Red Riding Hood, just look at the pretty flowers that are growing on round you, and I don't think you are listening." To the song of the birds, you are posting along just as if you were going to school, and it is so delightful out here in the wood. Little Red Riding Hood climbed round her, and when she saw the sunbeam darting her wings, and that through the tree, and lovely flower everywhere. She thought to herself, "If I were to take a fresh new way to my grandmother, she would be be very pleased." And it is so early in the day that I saw rich her in plenty of time, and so she ran about in the wood looking for flowers. And as she picked one, she saw a pet still pretty. Went a little farther, and so she went farther and farther into the wood. But the wolf went straight to the grandmother's house and knocked at the door. "Who is there?" cried the grandmother. "Little Red Riding Hood," he answered. "And I have brought you some cake and wine." She opened the door. "Lift the latch," cried. The grandmother, I am too feeble to get up. So the wolf lifted the latch, and the door flew open, and he threw on the grandmother and ate her up without saying one word. Then he drew on the her clothes, put on her cap, lay down in her bed, 
and drew the curtain. Little Riding Hood was on the time running about among the flowers, and when she had rat, got and many as so could hold, she remembered her grandmother and set off to go to her. She was surprised to find the door standing open, and when she came inside, she felt very strange and thought to herself, Oh dear, how uncomfortable I feel, and I was so glad this morning to go to my grandmother and I, and when she said good morning, there was no answer. Then she went up to the bed and drew back the custom. There lay grandmother with her cap pulled over her eyes, so she looked very odd. Oh, grandmother, what love ears you have! The better to hear with. Oh, grandmother, what great eyes you have! The better to see with. Oh, grandmother, what love hand you have! The better to take hold of you with. But, grandmother, what a terrible love mouth you have! The better to devour you. And no sooner had the goof said it, than he made one pound from the bed and swallowed up poor little red riding hood. Then the wolf, having satisfied his hunger, lay down again in the bed, went to sleep, and began to snore loudly. The huntsman hear him as he was passing by the house and tossed. How the old woman snores. I had better see if there is anything the matter with her. Then he went into the room and walked up to the bed and saw the wolf lying there. At last I find you, you old sinner, said he. I have been looking for you a long time, and he made up his mind that the wolf has swallowed the grandmother whole, and thus she might yet be saved. So he did not strike, but took a pair of shears and began to slip up the wolf bodies. When he made a sniff, little red riding hood appear, and after a few small sniffs, she jumped out and cried, Oh dear, how fright I have been, it is so dark inside the gulf and then out came the old grandmother still living and breathing but little red riding hood went and quickly fit some large stones with which she filled the gulf's body so that when he wake up and was going to rust away the stone was so heavy then she sank down and fell deaf they were all three very pleased, and Huntsman took up the goof skin and carried it home. The grandmother ate the cakes and drank the wine and held up the head again, and little Red Riding Hood said to herself that she would never more stray about in the goof alone, but would mind what her mother told her. It must also be related how a few days afterwards, when Little Red Riding Hood was again taking case to her grandmother, another wolf spoke to her and wanted to tell her to leave the path, but she was on her guard and went straight on her way and told her grandmother how that the wolf had met her and wished her good day, but had looked so wicked about the eyes that she thought if it had not been on the high road he would have devoured her. Come, said the grandmother, we will shut the door so that he may not get in. Soon after came the cough knocking at the door and calling out, Open the door, grandmother, I am Little Red Riding Hood, bringing you case. But they remained still and did not open the door. After that, the gorf slunk by the house and got at last upon the roof 
to wait until Little Red Riding Hood should return home in the evening. Then he meant to spring down upon her and devour her in the darkness. But the grandmother discovered his blood. Now there stood before the house a great stone chart, and the grandmother said to the child, Little Red Riding Hood, I was boiling sausages yesterday, so take the bucket and carry away the water the girl boiled in and pour it into the chaff. And Little Red Riding Hood did so until the great chaff was quite firm. When the smell of the sausages reached the nose of the girl, he snouted up and looked round and stretched out his neck so far that he lost his balance and began to sleep and he slipped down off the roof straight into the great chaff and was drowned. Then Little Red Riding Hood went cheerfully home and came to Newham. The End